Unreal. Unreal. What the hell? This, my gold sucks. No. Could be me. It's not me. It's my paints. Babe. Hun? I, I need new gold paint. I know you care about this as much as I do. I'm only going to be good if my paint's good. What's good, mini crafters? My name is Samuel, and I paint minis and build dioramas. And as we get past the Christmas and holiday season, I don't know about you, but I had some ho hobby goodies on my wish list that I ended up getting, and one of which I didn't even know that I needed. And I think you may be in the same boat. I'm talking about metallic paints, and in this week's video, we're going to be talking about Monument Hobbies Pro Acryl Metallic Paint Line. Try to say that 10 times fast. <laughs> I'm going to be trying these paints out and giving my thoughts on them, but as a heads up, I did not receive these from Monument Hobbies and I'm not being compensated by them. Rather, my awesome wife got these for me for Christmas after I was complaining about not having as comprehensive of a metallic paint set as I had wanted in the past. I've tried a few different metallic paints during my time in the hobby, but I've never really had a particular range capture my heart. After seeing numerous YouTubers and hobby painters talk about Monument Hobbies paints and seeing how great they seem to work in other videos, I was stoked to unwrap this metallic line for Christmas. From what I've seen, many painters have said that the viscosity of the paint is near perfect, which requires little to no thinning right out of the bottle. This lets you jump right in and gives you a smooth coverage and also offers vivid colors. I guess we're going to see how those initial thoughts hold up, especially with these metallic paints, since metallics are known to be notoriously hard to get good coverage with in just one layer. Something else that I've seen and think that is neat about these Pro Acryl paint bottles is that they come with what they call a no-clog cap, which provides the benefits of a dropper bottle and twist cap all in one. Now, this no-clog cap is nice, as much of the internet is divided on alternative paint bottles, namely the Citadel paint pots, and how practical those are, or aren't, for painting due to the challenge of keeping the pot paint open while painting. And one last thing that I noticed about these paint bottles when looking at them initially is that when you shake it, you hear this little clicking sound when you do. Turns out, Monument Hobbies loads all of their paint bottles with a little glass agitator to help with mixing the paint up as it settles. And this is particularly helpful, especially to hobbyers who don't have mixers, such as myself. But enough about the pros and the cons and inspecting the bottles, let's get to the fun part, which is figuring out what we're actually going to paint with these paints. Another awesome Christmas gift that I received this year comes from my brother, Thomas, and this can hardly be called a mini. This huge minifig is a terrifying Hydra from the team over at Misty Mountain Gaming. The Hydra is just one of their many amazing sculpts, and if you're interested in grabbing one for yourself, I'll have it linked in the description below. Now, a Hydra is a dragon-esque creature with five vicious heads that are often known to spew fire, acid, or any other number of horrible breaths. Now, I know many are going to say, Uh, actually, a Hydra's not technically a dragon? Mmm, but I say they are. The word dragon has its roots in the Greek language and was used to describe any monstrous serpent, really. Which, I would say includes a Hydra, since, you know, it's a big five-headed serpent. Let me know what you think. Is a Hydra a dragon or not? Drop a comment below and we'll get to the bottom of this. Regardless of whether a Hydra is a dragon or not, I'm going to be painting this scaly boy up as the biggest minifig that I've done to date. Big shout out to my brother Thomas. Thanks for getting this for me, man. You rock. In the Pro Acryl paint set, we have a handful of colors that should cover all of my metallic painting needs in this paint job and others. Not to mention it's going to help give me a leg up in my journey to painting the best TMM that I possibly can. TMM, or true metallic metal, involves the use of metallic paints to represent metallic surfaces. Now most metal paints have a bit of color pigment in the body of the paint, but they also have ultra-fine flecks of metal suspended in them as well, called mica flakes, in order to give the paint its metallic shine. Typically, the better the quality of paint, the more finely ground those mica flakes are, which makes for a smoother appearance when the paint dries. As I get my first base coats down on the Hydra, I'm honestly blown away by how smooth the paint comes from the brush onto the mini. I was planning to do a couple of layers since in the past I've not had much luck with my metallic paints going on evenly in one coat, but to be honest, these paints are super consistent and they cover nicely. 
I decided to do each of the Hydra heads in a different metallic color to A, let me test out more than one of these metallic paints, but B, I also thought it was more fun to have a variety of metallic colors rather than paint the whole thing one color. I also decided to paint the body with the dark silver color as a sort of unifying color. After getting all the metallic down, I wanted to hit the spines of each of the heads and necks with a dull red color. Later, I planned to add some lighter red and tan color in there to sort of blend that out. I also hit the bony spines with a layer of Citadel's Carrick Stone, and I'm also going to add a wash to everything and then come back in with my highlights, not only of the metallics, but of the bony parts in the webbing too. After finishing up all the base coats, I take a wash of Agrax Earthshade to everything. I'm evenly coating everything, and if I see any pooling, I work it into the cracks, recesses, and off of the upper areas. The goal of this step is to darken recesses and get some shadows and lines between all the scales, while also adding detail to the metallic areas. It's easy for parts of the minis that are painted with metallics to start to look like one solid piece which sometimes you want, but a wash like this helps to break up the monotonous surface a bit. After getting the wash added, I wanted to come back and add some highlights to the mini via dry brushing. Dry brushing is a super helpful technique in highlighting minis with lots of details and raised surfaces, such as this Hydra and all of its scales. I'm going to be using some of the complementary metallic colors, and I'm going to be dry brushing those on as highlights. For example, the main head here in the middle was base coated in a bronze color, so I'm going to be dry brushing a light bronze over that as a highlight. The only potential issue with dry brushing is that you risk overspray or getting the color that you're dry brushing on on other parts of the mini that you don't want that color on. Now normally I'd know I could either have it be a minor enough overspray that it wouldn't be noticeable or I could call it a shadow. But because I'm wanting to dry brush metallics on top of metallics, it's going to be a bit harder to hide that and it's going to show up a bit more. This isn't the end of the world though, and as a beginner painter, it's important for me to remind myself that I'm learning from my mistakes. So rather than stress about getting paint on the wrong spots of a mini, I can remember that next time, maybe I should change the order in which I apply the paint in the painting process. You wouldn't want to add a bunch of detail to a mini and then try to fill in with the base coat all around the details. Instead, you would probably base coat first and then add your details on top of it. This can also serve as a great opportunity for me to practice my dry brushing techniques. You don't always have a nice big mini to dry brush, or sometimes you might want to dry brush and use that effect, but on a small part of a miniature. So learning to control the brush and hone techniques like that is going to help me become a better painter and that'll help you become a better painter. I can practice here with brush control so that I minimize how much overspray I have on this project and on future projects. Bottom line, don't be so hard on yourself if you mess something up or don't nail it exactly the way you want on the first try. Part of the mini painting process is making mistakes and learning from those mistakes. Really anything in life. If you're going to make a mistake, don't sit on that and let it weigh you down. Learn from it and move forward. As a last step after the dry brushing, I'm going to be coming in with my detail brush to get some final highlights in place. I'm highlighting scales, edge highlighting parts of the heads to get some brighter spots, and generally looking to add some color back in. For example, I noticed that the Hydra head that I painted the rich gold was looking a little bit washed out after I dry brushed the bright gold on it. So to bring back some of that initial color, I'm highlighting some of the scales with the original rich gold color. I'm loving how well the Pro Acryl paints are behaving. They aren't streaking or clumping up as I brush them over everything, and still the coverage is amazing. With the dry brushing done and the detail highlighting finished, I'm going to go back and touch up some of the areas on the spines and webbing where I had overspray. I can blend the darker red of the webbing into the lighter highlights, all while fixing any spots where I got metallic paint that I didn't mean to. For the webbing between the spines, I'm adding a touch of Carrick Stone to my red to get a slightly lighter red that still shares the same color as the base coat on the spines. I'm adding some streaks back and forth in a slight arch following the sculpt and the shapes of the webbing between the spines. Speaking of spines, for those, I'm going to be coming in with some of Citadel's Morgas Bone, starting at the base of the spine and brushing it up to the tip. I'm not covering the Carrick Stone base color all the way up, though. 
And from there, I'm going to be adding a few streaks of Screaming Skull, also from Citadel, to each spine and a bit at the tips. This is going to help to add some depth and highlight to each of the spines, giving it more of a bony appearance. And while I still have some of the spine colored paint on my wet palette, I'm going to be moving on to the teeth of each Hydra head. Now the teeth are much smaller than the spines, but I'm still going to be trying to give it that base coat of the Carrick Stone and then adding a touch of the Screaming Skull to add a little bit of highlight to them. The last thing to take care of here are the eyes. But what color are Hydra eyes? After a good amount of research, googling, and reading some D&D books, it turns out they can be whatever color I want them to be. In this case, I landed on a vivid green. The trick here isn't in the color, however, but rather the shape of the eye. Our eyes are circular in shape, but serpent eyes are more of a vertical slit running up and down. So, to capture this, I'm dotting the eyes with my dark green color, which is Vallejo's refractive green, to be specific, then I'm coming in with a bit of this fluorescent green and dotting that on as well to boost the color. This fluorescent green really bumps the color up, but because I'm putting it over the base coat of the refractive green, it's not going to look radioactive green. From there, I'm taking the thinnest line of black right down the middle of the eye, and that's the eye done. I'm going to be doing a pretty standard basing job for this scaly boy, rather than just leave him on the plain black base. First, I'm going to be gluing down some cork layers to simulate rock, and then I'm going to be applying some modeling paste to the whole thing. And while it's still wet, I'm sprinkling on some fine ballast and adding a few larger stones all around the base. After that all dries, I'm going to prime it up, add some Agrax Earthshade to the ground while dry brushing the cork stone a gray color, and I'm going to add a couple of tufts of grass. Oh, and don't forget to paint your base rim black. Otherwise, I will find you. This Hydra is now shiny and finished, and honestly, I'm blown away by the vivid metallic shine from each of the Pro Acryl paints. They went on smoothly, they blended well, and they left my Hydra looking like actual metal. I am so pleased with how the paint job turned out on this mini. The Pro Acryl metallic paints are great, and I will absolutely be using them in the future on other projects. If you're interested in checking out the paints yourself or picking up the mini that I painted up, I'm going to have both the links down in the description below for you to take a look at. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more content like it, please consider subscribing to my channel. It goes such a far way in helping me and the channel grow. And if you have any questions or thoughts or comments, drop a comment below so that we can all learn together. And lastly, be sure to hit the little bell button down below as well so that you're notified as soon as one of my new videos drops. That's going to do it for this one, you guys. Until next time, make sure you keep on crafting.